Rock star turned lawmaker Freddie Lim shares why he invited U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to Taiwan. And he also talks about how he connects music and politics. Taiwan's southern cities have made the Michelin Bib Gourmand list, and one dish has caused a little controversy. And finally, in hashtag Taiwan, I ask people to change the way they talk about Taiwan. This is Taiwan Insider. Welcome to the show. Did you know that the famous Freddie Lim, who was an independent legislator and the lead singer of the heavy metal band Thonic, met Nancy Pelosi and invited her to come to Taiwan? We'll hear more about that encounter and how Freddie connects music and politics in Emma's interview. Now, I'd like to start with talking <laughs> about something that has made headlines around the world recently, and that's Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan. I know that uh, earlier in the summer you went to the United States and you spoke with Ms. Pelosi and you invited her to come to Taiwan. Yeah. And I'd just like to know why, why did you think it was important to invite her? I think uh, it's very important to have Taiwan play an equal role in the international stage. Of course, people know that Taiwan is very important in the chips industry, but not just that, but also Taiwan is very important in the Indo-Pacific region for the regional security. And also Taiwan played a very important role for supporting the Hong Kong activists, anti baton activists, and all the human rights issues around this area. So it's, it's very important to have this country to play an equal role in the international stage to exchange ideas with the other democra uh, democracies. So not just Nancy Pelosi uh, visited Taiwan, but in the last few years, a lot of parliamentarians from different countries and also the speaker of the Czech Republic parliament has mm -hmm. also visited Taiwan. So it's very important to have democracies work together, strengthen multilateral relations, uh, relationships. It's very important to have Nancy Pelosi as the Speaker of the United States to, to visit in Taiwan because it's proof to the world that when you consider Taiwan is important, then mm -hmm. you have to act like that. Mm -hmm. We have to let the world know that democracy is united. So I think, uh, I think Nancy Pelosi's visiting is, uh, is a very important sign to the world that to show that yeah it's it's the right thing to do there's nothing to hide it's let's let our friendships on the table what exactly did ms pelosi say when you invited her to come visit taiwan i visited her uh, in late june and uh, because i didn't know that she has actually uh, already planned for coming to taiwan mm -hmm. in early august so i visit uh, i told her that uh, her visiting will be welcomed by a lot of Taiwanese. So we hope that, we sincerely hope that she will make it soon. And she told me definitely. I didn't, I, I, I thought it's just a, just a response in a polite way. Uh, I didn't know <laughs> that I'd seen the actual plan. Mm -hmm. What did you think about the whole international reaction to Nancy Pelosi's visit, especially coming from China? I think first of all, I think China has been overreacting too much and but in the other hand china is always like that mm -hmm. so taiwanese we we kind of get used to that but in the other hand we we stay in a very high cautious i think this might be the first time that the world concerns about the security of the taiwan Straits so much especially after the russians invasion to ukraine yeah. so the world uh really concerns about the security, the, the, these conflicts in the Taiwan Straits. The right direction is to continue what the world is doing with Taiwan. And uh, I hope that China will get used to that very soon. And uh, uh, it seems we are on the right track. I'd also like to talk more about your role as a heavy metal star. Yeah. So how have your identities as both a musician and politician influenced each other? I always always remind myself not to divide myself into two different identities. Mm -hmm. My experience as a musician influenced how I been as a, a politician more. Mm -hmm. For instance, like as a metal singer. During our tour, we have to continue the same set 
-hmm. singing to different crowds, but we still have to remain the high energy to mm -hmm. be energetic. To, to show our passion to different crowds every night, but with the same set. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's that's something that uh, the, as a new politician might not get used to that because they have to 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 share the same ideas every day with mm -hmm. the same energy. But that's not a, a easy thing. The speaker get bored of speaking. Yeah. Yeah, the same thing every day. But as a musician, train. For more than twenty years, I, mm -hmm. I I get used to that. So so for me, I think that's one thing that uh, as a musician influenced my political activities. And uh, the other thing is that I think to always find the the reason why I'm doing this. So as a musician, I, it's much easier for for me to find the em emotional part, inspir inspirational parts mm -hmm. of this uh, motivation. I always try to find the right the the same source of power that yeah. that driving me to keep moving forward to do what i'm doing right now to not be just not like another politician mm -hmm. to to be more as an artist and who run for the parliaments that would be more natural for me uh, to find mm -hmm. the, the motivation to remain the motivation yeah. yeah i mean you definitely stand out as a politician <laughs> to me and i i want to ask about how your band thonic mm -hmm. has promoted certain political issues both in taiwan and in the international community as music itself it's not that easy to really introduce my political views mm -hmm. because metal is more like about legends mm -hmm. or uh, mythologies or about those uh, supernatural things. And also as a, as a metal songwriter, I, the, the, the only thing, the most important thing for me and for our guitarist, another important songwriter in Thonic, it's more about how to be metal. Mm -hmm. It's more <laughs> about how to be more metal, more mm -hmm. tough more sharing those extreme emotions. So we don't talk about, we never talked about politics when mm -hmm. we are writing music, but the critics mm -hmm. or the fans, they, they, when they listen to our music and read between the lines and oh, think behind those lyrics, mm -hmm. they will share their ideas about what Freddie might think about, mm -hmm. what Jesse might think about, and share their point of views. And we never hide ourselves of those mm -hmm. views. We will exchange our views with them. We, sometimes they found out something deep in our minds, deep in our hearts, we mm -hmm. didn't know. So <laughs> it was a great thing that uh, when we are writing uh, music. When we write music, we don't uh, uh, directly put our point of views in our lyrics, but mm -hmm. our fans or critics might find something between the lines. And then that's a very interesting part of the process after our songs sharing with, uh, with others. Then we can share more about mm -hmm. what they are thinking about. So you feel that music can be an important force in getting more young people involved in politics? Yeah, definitely. Because I think if you want to create a, a, a true art from your heart, mm -hmm. it's very important that all those creations, all those works, uh, touch yourself first. Mm -hmm. That's very important. So those works who, that can touch yourselves and your relatives, your friends, that can definitely share the same energy, share the same concerns with more people. Although it's not like a political talk show, how mm -hmm. political talk show might, can, might be able to influence people. But I think the power of music is even stronger because the, the impact is not just uh, a short time impact, but, but will be more deeper, will be a long time. Uh, impact to let people to, to let people think by themselves. It was great getting to talk to Freddie Lim about the interesting connections that music and politics can have. The full interview will be up on YouTube. Next up, we have a video about one of Tainan's most famous treats. Oyster omelets are uniquely Taiwanese delicacy. Oysters are fried on a pan with egg and vegetables until golden brown, then smothered in sauce but this humble dish is now Michelin approved. This year, the Michelin Guide's Bib Gourmand featured 27 restaurants in Tainan. The Bib Gourmand is a selection of low-cost, high-value restaurants Michelin recommends. But a photo used to depict one of Tainan's best oyster omelets is causing a stir. 
Many are saying, hey, wait a second, is that a real oyster omelet? One local resident says it looks like a French take on the Taiwanese classic. Locals say the dish pictured in the Michelin Guide is a misrepresentation of the Taiwanese favorite. But the restaurant owner says it's all a misunderstanding. The restaurant owner says the picture shown is from 2014. She says it was for display purposes only, with the oysters stacked on top to show that their take on the dish is brimming with the succulent shellfish. The owner adds that the dish pictured is different from how it is typically prepared at her establishment. But this recent spat shows just how passionate Taiwanese people are about their traditional gastronomy. Next up in Hashtag Taiwan, Leslie talks about changing the way people talk about Taiwan. You know, talking about Taiwan has been pretty difficult for the past few weeks. Now that's because people all of a sudden have a strong opinion about Taiwan or are desperately trying to not have an opinion about Taiwan. But both the opinions and deflections aren't really about Taiwan. They're about China. What will China think and more importantly do? How will China react? What does China want? At the same time, it seems like barely anybody talks about what Taiwan wants or needs. Yeah. You know what? Let's talk about something neutral. Baseball. Taiwan loves baseball. It's the great all Taiwanese pastime and Taiwan's pretty good at it too. Most recently, a junior high school from Taizong won the Junior League Baseball World Series. In that run, they had a perfect 5 wins and 0 losses record. Very impressive. Now, Taiwan is making the case for itself again as it competes in the Little League World Series, which is being held in Pennsylvania. And as Taiwanese teams keep collecting achievements, the fandom grows. You might have missed the fact that former US President George W. Bush is an avid baseball fan. Before his political career, he worked for the Texas Rangers Major League Baseball team. So it's fair to say that he knows a thing or two about the sport. Earlier this week, he commentated on a Major League Baseball game between the Boston Red Sox and the Baltimore Orioles, during which he said this. You know, I was excited to see the Taiwanese team, not to get all political and stuff, but it, I think it helps relations for Taiwan to be able to play baseball here. Yeah, and we've, we've missed him. Look, we, we missed a lot over the last couple of years. This is the first time they've been back, the international teams, in three years. Yeah. It's a different event. It is. Did you hear that? George W. Bush said he was excited to see the Taiwanese team compete, which is kind of a big deal. First, heck yes, Taiwan has some amazing and talented players, and it's genuinely exciting to see them play. Second, as a former president, George W. Bush should be better informed about the intricacies of Taiwan's international standing than, say, your average baseball commentator. So kudos to him for pointing out that it's a team from Taiwan. But what was that he said just before? Not to get all political and stuff. And we're back again. Why is it every time there's a conversation about Taiwan, even when it's something about as harmless as baseball, it's overshadowed by China's claim to Taiwan? Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan? Well, that must be a big deal because it'll anger China. China. Japan donated vaccines to Taiwan? Oh no, China not happy. The US sailed a boat through the Taiwan Strait? Oof, I wonder what China thinks about that. Even mentioning Taiwan in the context of a sporting event for young athletes is making politicians defensive. The conversation is now so twisted that by merely saying Taiwan out loud, it can be construed as a political act. And if the word Taiwan finds itself anywhere near the word country, Oh boy, you're in a world of trouble. Bing -bing. Now, will George W. Bush's brief mention of Taiwan make China angry? Very possible, because China has gotten angry for less. Now, the world needs to learn to talk about Taiwan without automatically veering into a China angle or just avoiding the topic altogether because it's problematic. Living in the shadow of this massive issue in the Taiwan Strait are people, and people don't deserve to be talked about like they're a problem or a common pest. Anyway, I'm Leslie Liao and this show has been hashtag not to get all political and stuff Taiwan. And before we go back to the studio for our final question of the week, here's a look at some of the other stories that are on our radar. Government statistics show that Taiwan's fertility rate has hit a record low of 0.89 newborns per female. That's far below the replacement level of 2.1 needed to keep population numbers steady. This means Taiwan's population may soon start shrinking. Polls show that families are choosing to have fewer children because of low wages, the high costs of raising a child, and the unequal distribution of chores in the traditional family model. After a 17-hour manhunt, Xinzhu police have detained a man suspected of killing two police officers. The man was on the run after being temporarily released from prison when police say he stabbed two officers to death. 
The Tainan District Court says the suspect is a flight risk and likely to destroy evidence, so he will not be released on bail. The 2022 Qijin Kite Festival drew tens of thousands of visitors to Taiwan's southern metropolis of Kaohsiung. The event over the weekend was a part of the Kaohsiung government's efforts to revitalize the local economy and attract tourists to the city following the COVID-19 pandemic. Besides spectacular kites, the organizers also showcased a number of impressive sand sculptures. So coming back from my interview with Freddie Lim, I wanted to ask a question of you guys that has to do with music as well. And I wanted to know who is your favorite Taiwanese band or musician and Freddie Lim is off the table. <laughs> Freddie Lim is off the table, so I'm going first, I assume. Yes, go ahead. My, for my absolute favorite artist in Taiwan is Jolin Tsai. Ah. Because uh, I thought about this question for a long time. Good question, Emma. It made me really stir the juices. Usually with these questions, they, I already have an answer in mind, but mm -hmm. this one took me a little while. Um, Jolin came out when I was in middle school, and I've been listening to her music for a long time now, and she's been consistently good, consistently racking up the awards. She helps Taiwan shine on the international stage. But not only that, she's also uh, an artist that's very committed to her craft. And for that, I really have to say that Joe Lin is my favorite. Cool, she's very talented and hardworking. Yeah. And I'd have to say the queen of Mendo Pop, Ame. Ooh. It's my favorite. I love her energy and confidence and how she was a pioneer for the Aboriginal community. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just love that about her. So, and she's done a lot for all, all types of communities, for women and indigenous people and LGBT people, all, all kinds of people. She's been kind of speaking out for them as well. Well, that, so. that connects really well actually with mine, uh, which is Aba. And this is actually a new favorite of mine. Um, so I also have a music show behind the beats. And this week I was featuring Abao, who is an R&B Taiwanese singer. And so the Paiwan are a group of indigenous people in Taiwan. And even though you know they make up a minority of the population, uh, she's done a great job of really introducing their culture through music. So. Um, she's a new favorite of mine. They're all female. You have certainly you did your research, <laughs> Emma. Very, very good. Well, uh, that's about all the time we have for this edition of Taiwan Insider. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Leslie Liao. I'm Natalie So. And I'm Emma Banak. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We're on all the major platforms like Facebook and YouTube. And also a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, I guess that's it for today, right? Yeah, that's going to be it. We'll be back with another episode next week. Until then, guys, see you around. Bye.